Richard Hadley, obviously the danger man for New Zealand. He's the most accurate of their bowlers, the quickest. And uh, if he fires early on, it could really be tough. It's going to be tough enough anyhow. 276 scored by New Zealand. Equation, your first glimpse of that one. In the air and beautifully taken. What a magnificent catch by Jeremy Coney. He has got great hands, diving away to his right. He really just snaffled that one and inch above the surface. A magnificent slip, Billman, Jerry Coney. And as Tony Gregg said, he's got magnificent hands, but on this occasion he only needed one of them, and that was the right one that flew to him pretty quickly, and it was going down. A magnificent catch by Tony, and what a start by New Zealand. Getting rid of Marsh without scoring, and Hadley getting that early wicket. So Australia, one for none. In the air, he's got him again. What a magnificent fielder he is. That one bounced a little bit just outside the off stump. War had a bit of a flirt at it. It went very quickly to Coney. This time, two hands to it, but it went straight in. And the catchers of both teams, the captains of both teams, getting right in the act of late. Alan Border's been taking catches, and Jeremy Coney chipping in with the first two. He saw the other one go to his right, but on that occasion, a little easier, but it certainly flew to his left. And both hands wrapped around it. So, excellent start by New Zealand. Australia 2 for 10 with Stephen Waugh out for 3. Oh, he's got him. Another one. Well, Jeremy Coney has caught the third one of this innings. That was quite a thicky outside edge. Went flying away to slip. And that's the end again, Trimble. Well, the captains must have had a magnet in these balls used over here at the Adelaide Open because it was Alan Border who picked up three catches in the New Zealand first innings and already Coney in this just the fifth over. Three catches, that one probably the easiest of them all. But certainly if I was Jeremy Coney, I'd stay in that position all day. What a magnificent pair of hands he's got. Glenn Trimble out for four and Australia really struggling at three for 15. Fours and it was an intelligent innings. Edged, and well taken this time by McSweeney. So he cuts uh, Coney out of it. But that was also a good catch, and once again, a tremendous delivery around about off stump from Richard Hadley. And, uh, and what an advantage to have a man capable of catching. Talking of good catches, look at McSweeney a long way across in front of first slip, and a great catch, and I think... Uh, the direction given by Coney has lifted the whole New Zealand side. And with David Boone now back in the pavilion, Australia are four for 20. Field to border. Border skies it. Hadley. In fact, it's Gillespie, uh, that third man. He's taken the catch, almost ran under it. But at the last minute, he grabbed it, and there's a look of relief on the face of Ewan Chatfield, the bowler. Well, what a breakthrough. What can we say? Australian innings crippled beyond belief. Five wickets down for 31 runs on a magnificent wicket. 250 runs plus capable out here. The Australian captain on his way, trying to force square the wicket on the onside. The ball balloons high to third man. And Gillespie grabs the ball tight to his rib cage. And on his way, nine runs to border. And Australia, five for 30. Who's faces Gillespie? That's out. Leave the poor wicket. Gillespie the bowler. Matthews the ex-batsman. And six wickets down. Matthews having a good hard look at his bat on that occasion. Took a while to turn to head to the dressing room, but it looked adjacent. If there wasn't any bat to it, he shuffles across. Well, he was pum and appeared. Bruce Martin had a good look. Matthews hesitates, but Gillespie's the man who struck for New Zealand, Australian team in tatters as Matthews goes for four. It's now six for 47. Gillespie to McDermott. Well, there are two men out there. Only needs one to get underneath it. That's taken safely. Well, John Wright is the man who took the catch. I'm not sure about uh, that tactic. I've seen that happen with Craig McDermott uh, 
on uh, quite a few occasions. Wayne Phillips is left stranded out there. Yes, yeah, unbelievable, really. I know they've got to score it seven runs per over to win this match, but the man that should be striking should be Wayne Phillips. And Wright took a straightforward outfield catch. McDermott departs. Gillespie gets his second wicket, and it's all New Zealand here at the Adelaide Oval. McDermott out for one. There's seven for 55, Australia, in reply to 276. In the air. And Sackfield takes the catch. So the short boundary has sucked Wayne Phillips in. And a good catch running in there by Ewan Chatfield. Not normally noted for his outfielding. Yes, he looked as if he hadn't got that quite right. Phillips once again going for that short boundary. This time not quite keeping it down. He got underneath it a little bit. There was a bit of top edge in that one. And in comes Chatfield. He caught it around about knee height. At the end, not a bad catch by him. And uh, that's the end of Wayne Phillips. And so, having made 22, Australia now moved down. One to eight for sixty-eight. The shout there from Bruce Blair, and he's got a wicket. So uh, he's been dismissed for the first time today, but he's uh, struck back, getting a wicket himself. So Bruce Blair looking to wrap this game up pretty quickly for New Zealand. The long, lanky Bruce Reed, not using those uh, long legs of his at all. Caught on the crease line and in front. Tony Crafter says your LBW. Bruce Reed out for one. And Australia sliding towards a very heavy defeat. Apparently nine down for 70. That's gone. Caught and bold. John Bracewell wraps up the innings. So Australia have made the second lowest score in this competition. 63 was the previous, or was the, is the worst, made by India. And Australia all out for 70. Victory to New Zealand by 206 runs. And the Kiwis have definitely shown no mercy.